I mean, there, were there any onset conflicts between those guys? Or? No, I have to tell you, they were all, uh, not really, there was a story to tell between them. Was it the first thing that he and Robert Wright did together? Was that yes, what that's the movie they met on. Now, there were onset conflicts between those two. They fought like cats and dogs the whole movie. And, um, but and it's just, just oh my god, yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, they were at each other's. But like Pam and Tommy, they just keep going. Back. They just, oh yeah, they were madly in love with each other, of course, the whole movie. But they were, yeah, they were just it, every scene with the two of them. Of course, almost every scene with the two of them is fraught, with, you know, with something horrible happening. That movie, every single day you wake up and someone's gonna get in a fight, get shot, get stabbed. It's a very dramatic get, movie. Yeah. yeah get, bottle in their day so and just something you know chop something off you know um so every day was a uh was a, a pretty tension so those they all kind of but you know what you know you're pr pretty on the day you were pretty you know in character pretty pretty method i had never done a movie and i didn't know that it took so long yeah i, and I, I couldn't believe it and you know the bama game was on you know yeah. i was like well, I can go watch the game and come back or whatever yeah. right? and i put my hand through the through the uh, gym Door. I remember that. Remember that glass? Yes. I just got, you know, I didn't realize the yeah, process. You, yeah, you, know. you were ant. I mean, you were, you, 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 you oh. gave me a lot of work, and you got, came in character, and these guys came in character. Hey, you know, I remember running around the whole parking lot to get ready for, yeah. let's finish, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, or, or he did Shakespeare, and then, let's finish, you know. No, you were in it the whole way. Right. The whole way, and those guys were too. I mean, they come, so whatever the mood of the scene was, that was the mood of the day. So, because there's not a lot of light scenes in that film. Yeah, has everybody here seen yeah, it? A lot of people have seen it. It's a pretty, uh... Okay, is, it, is it a spoiler to tell you to anybody dies? Is that... <laughs> oh, you haven't seen it? Uh, well, let, let me just say this. Some of the deaths in this movie are so, like, horrifically choreographed. When you see them, it is just so intense. You feel it, and the, the whole, the peck and paw at the end of it, man, is just beautiful yeah. film. Like, I love this movie so much, I'm very excited that they were showing it. Yeah, it was an incredible, I mean, it was a really, you know, I, what was great about it, we really realized, and Three O'Clock High was this too, and State of Grace and I have made films that weren't this, where it were totally supported, really. I mean, at the end of the day, there was no one on set telling us, it was us. You know, we made the movie together on Three O'Clock. I had the same thing on State of Grace. Ryan completely, you know, went out of business after this film. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably because of the film. But they, um, they were, distribute Woody Allen too. Yeah, they Woody Allen, and they yeah, had. So in fact, the year, the year they went out of business, it was uh, State of Grace, Silence of the Lambs, and Dances with Wolves, like in a row. And then, they, and then what happened was John Kluge, Kluge was financing them, and he just pulled his financing. That's why they. Wasn't well, Dances with Wolves independent though? Didn't no, it was Ryan. What is it? Yeah, my, I mean, some of the financing might have been, but Ryan distributed it. Costner put up a ticket for that. You're talking about choreographing the uh, deaths, though. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three o'clock high, too, the, the yeah, last punch. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, yeah. the uh, stunt coordinator, Buddy somebody, uh, he worked Oh, yeah, 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 Buddy Van Horn. Yeah, he Buddy Van Horn. Yeah, he worked for the Eastwood. I said, man, all I said, East it's, East it's got to be one punch. He goes, yeah, well. He says, go ask him. I walked over and you're standing right by Jerry and you're both, this is uh, Casey, and you're both the same side. Oh, like, the I don't have a chance in hell winning this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but the one punch, but you go, I want you to look at him like, well, you did surprise me, yeah. but then you did it. And there's like five different things. And I'm going, okay. He's hungry, man. <laughs> <laughs> and and we, did it, we did it seven times. Really? Wow. Yeah. 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 You get hit a couple times. Yeah. It's boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It's a triple time damage. But more than anything, it's that metal. It's, it's the brass knuckle. Yeah. Not like the like brass knuckle. You never could have taken. Yeah. No way. He needed no way. Well, he, he would have been gone after the first punch in that chest. Yeah, no, he <laughs> like six times out. Come on, he's yeah, down and out. I forgot about the punch in the chest. No. Oh, she's surprised. I was like, oh, he's punching yeah. in the chest. That is my move. Anytime it, it, it's down, it's like, oh, I know this works. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, like, call 45. <laughs> People have state of grace questions. What you got? Uh, can you talk about Jordan Kramitz? Yeah, Jordan was, uh, Jordan shot the movie. I did three movies with Jordan. He did Rattle and Hum, uh, State of Grace, and Final Analysis with me. You can't say Rattle and Hum without sidetracking, because <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, Rattle and Hum is the concert movie uh, when they toured for Joshua Tree, when you two toured for Joshua Tree. It's an epic film because it's such an intimate portrait of an amazing band right when they are conquering the world. I understand not getting a phone call for that one. <laughs> yeah. The other ones? Come on, man. That side of me to sidetrack you. Um, it was, uh, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> uh, 
made me mad, Phil. <laughs> You're going to have to pay. Um, <laughs> it was, yeah, that's it. Um, the Jordan um, shot Blade Runner and, um, you know, a lot of, like, some several films for Coppola because you've got Mary Gardenstone. Anyways, an incredible director of photography. He had Parkinson's, very serious Parkinson's d disease when we made all, all three films. And he passed away um, not too long after Final Analysis. He was the, the incredible, um, just visionary. He's one of the, he and Connie Hall were like the last of the old school, you know, traditional, but really progressive, obviously, which is why they both made incredible films right up to the end of their lives. And, um, you know, Jordan was Connie's operator on Bush Catherine and Sundance Kids. He was actually Connie Hall's protege. And you could not, uh, I, I loved the man. I loved working with him. He was so simple and so easy and, and so without ego. And so, you know, I was just talking about it today. I'm, um, I'm working with uh, Emmanuel Lubezki on something um, right now. And I was telling, um, they call him Chivo, and I was saying, you know, just Jordan would turn to you. And he was, you know, he was very, um, you know, quiet, and he would just turn to you and say, "It's beautiful." <laughs> and, and I, and I just don't do that to me. Yeah, <laughs> but it was, it was so. It made. I said, you know, for a director to have a guy like Jordan Cronenworth turn to you after a take and say, "It's beautiful," like made you feel like you were making some something great. It made you feel. He's a huge, huge part of this movie. I mean, there is no state of grace without Jordan. There just isn't. Period. And uh, and our collaboration was really, really special. And um, pretty much anything that you like about it visually, you should, you know, it's, it's to his credit. I, I've always, film is like my favorite medium because it is so, it's just so evocative, you know, and, and especially when you take advantage of the, the camera and allow it to tell a story. And I just find that your movies are so emotive and without uh, a lot of dialogue, without a lot of effort, they just really tell a story and connect an audience to it. It's, it's why I'm such a fan of yours. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. And thank you for putting this together. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.